And this is because of the friction force plus the second law. What are the equations we can write down for A now? So this is uh, just using uh, the third law and what we know about B. The uh, summation of forces equals the mass of A times the acceleration of A. Correct. So what is the direction of the acceleration of A? Of course, it's going to be to the left. You're going to get the acceleration of A in that direction. We can say that the sum of the forces along the vertical is going to be zero. We can write that down. You can say that you have uh, N A G is equal to W A E plus N A B. But N A B is uh, W B, so we get the sum of the weights. Since they have the same mass, we just get that. So this is saying that the sum of the forces along the vertical is equal to zero. Now we can do sum of the forces along the horizontal is equal to MA. What is that equation going to give us? force of frictions. Yeah. Well, let me just write them uh, as they are, and then we're going to replace them. This one we know is given here. So it's going to be mu and g. What about this one? Right, because F kinetic AG is equal to mu N AG. According to what we have up here, it's 2MG, so we get 2MG mu. So what do we get? We get P minus mu MG minus 2 mu MG equal to m times the acceleration of a. So we get that the acceleration of a is p, or we can write it differently. We can write p over m minus, here the m goes away, so minus uh, 3 mu g. answer your question yeah. um, so the, for the second one uh, well you just have different free body diagrams you have to be careful for the second one because B is going to move to the right and what can you say about the acceleration of B and the acceleration of A for the second one they're, they're going to be equal yes <coughs> right so you can choose an axis for B going to the right and for A going to the left. And if you do a summation of forces, is the mass 2M times A? For? If you're, if you're moving A, you're, you're technically moving A. Do a free, but, OK. So when you do a free body diagram for A only, the mass is M, period. And you take into account the influence of B via this normal 
and the force of friction acting on A by B. Now you could look at the entire system, but that doesn't uh, really work because it's not a rigid system. It doesn't move as one. So you don't have the same acceleration for A and B. So you cannot take the two blocks together. The second one? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I can outline what you would do. So for B, you would get this pre-body diagram now. Normal acting on B by A. Uh, tension acting on B by the rope. Force of friction, kinetic, acting on B by A. And you have the weight acting on B by the earth. So the acceleration of B is directed to the right. It's good to take an axis to the right for B. And for A, you would get its weight the normal by the ground. normal acting on A by B. You have a force of friction acting on A by B. Which way does it go? <coughs> um, well, it's the third law of here, so go to the right. Mm -hmm. Correct. You have the force of friction kinetic acting on A by B. You have also the force of friction acting on A by the ground. Also to the right, to the top. Also to the, the right, right, because it moves to the right. To the left, sorry. There is a tension. There is a tension. We have P. Um, it's easy to forget the force. I think I have them all. Yes. You have uh, third lap pairs in there. Same as what we had before. You have also the tensions that are equal, not because of the third law, but because you can neglect uh, the mass of the pulley and the mass of the rope. You can say in there that you have uh, TBR is equal to TAR is equal to T. A is moving to the left. And as you said, Colin, you can say that the accelerations of A and B are the same. Because So you can uh, write F net is equal to MA with a positive direction to the right for B, and F net is equal to MA with a positive direction to the left for A. And then you solve your problem. But you don't have to choose uh, left and right for B, but if you don't, uh, you cannot say that. You have to put a minus sign somewhere, which is uh, not very convenient. But it's a good idea to do that. Okay, so that was uh, to introduce uh, friction. So that should uh, should be able to do this uh, problem now. So let's continue now with uh, some more examples in uh, rectangular coordinates. I'm going to give you more time to think about it. I did not hear because uh, since it is a homework problem. I'm sure that many of you have already spent some time on that. That's why I went over uh, on the board. Who had the worked on problem? Okay, so now. <laughs> 